So the twins were now Gothic. And all of Esther's friends were Gothic. And they were all hungry. So they had decided to go to Italy's pizza parlor to have some Palerzi pizza. They had done this before and they're more than excited to do it again. Uh, the twins were told how great it was and they were looking forward to it. They said they had had a lot of pizza in their life. Um, and it was one of their favorite foods. So Esther said that obviously they couldn't all go in the same car, so they broke it up. Uh, Esther would take half and Aunt Brandy would drive the twins and uh, Raven and Riley Grace. So they all met at the pizza parlor and Esther had phoned in advance to tell Mr. Pilarzi Sr. that she had a party of 10 coming and he was very excited because sadly Esther being busy with school um, and the grocery store being rebuilt uh, hadn't made it back to the pizza restaurant which uh, she wanted to but hadn't done it yet so anyway um, she phoned ahead and Mr. Pilarzi Sr. Uh, the founder of the restaurant he was very excited because he had met Esther before and Esther could speak Italian and he just loved it. As a matter of fact, Esther had convinced him to take his pills that his grandson kept pushing at him every day, which would help improve his memory. And so on arrival, Mr. Pilarzi Sr. greeted them and gave Esther a large hug and said hi to Brandy. And then Esther introduced the rest of the girls to Mr. Pilarzi Sr. He took them to the far back of the restaurant and said, I have the best table for you and the best waitress, which was a granddaughter of his. And so it had been a pretty busy night and his granddaughter, uh, Maria, wasn't available at that moment. So he said, why don't I get the drinks? So. And Brandy said, well, I can't have pizza without beer. I just love the cold beer. And Tracy, Ann, and Danielle Elizabeth, they said, oh, well, we love cold beer too, especially with pizza. And so the rest of the girls, they all agreed to have water, uh, especially after Esther said that she would have water. And so Mr. Um, Pilarzi, he went up to the bar and poured a couple pitchers of beer and had the water uh, glasses ready. Esther had followed him. She put his hand on his and said, 
why don't I help carry this back for you? And then in, in Italian, she said to him, we will serve the customers. And so that excited him. He loved to hear Esther speak Italian. And so they, they went back to the table. Mr. Pilarzi uh, took the beers off and did one to had brandy and handed a pitcher of beer to Tracy. And then he uh, handed the glasses of water around the table. So at that point, uh, the waitress, his granddaughter, Maria, she came up and apologized for being late and thanked her grandpa for helping. It had been one of the busiest nights ever. And so she uh, apologized for that and thanked her grandfather for helping and then asked if she could take their order. And they said to Esther, well, why don't we order four of the large Pilarzi pizzas? Esther said, that's wonderful, because if there's any extra, we all love cold pizza, and we'll take it home. And so Maria said, well, that's simple enough. And she took off to put the order in. And Esther asked Mr. Pillar to see if he wanted to sit with them for a few minutes, and he said yes. And so in simple conversation, he thanked Esther again for coming and that he had missed her that it had been so long. And Esther apologized for that. She said, with my dad's grocery store expanding and school, it's been very busy. And then Mr. Pillars, he also thanked her for having suggested he take his medications, which he says, now my memory is much better. I will remember all of you girls because you're all very special to me. And so he said, excuse me, I'll have to go to the kitchen now and help out. And so Esther gave him a kiss on the cheek and he took off. And so everybody's chatting away. Uh, Aunt Brandy is working on her second glass of beer. And the twins have their pitcher of beer down to half. And at that point, the girl comes back with the four pizzas and they just smelled great and they were bubbling and she said they're extremely hot so you might want to just give them a minute or two to cool down and they were all looking at him very excited everybody had grabbed a piece and they were waiting just a minute or two for the cheese to cool and then they all started eating and were enjoying the pizza and conversation uh, very much. And so about halfway through the pizza, the waitress came over and asked if she needed uh, refills. And, and Brandy said, well, I could use an another pitcher of beer. And the twins said, well, we probably could too. And so uh, Maria saw that everybody could use some more water, so she had a young man fill the water and she went for the uh, pitchers of beer. And so the girls sat there finished their pizzas, enjoyed the beer, and eventually most of the pizzas were gone. 
and Randy said, I'm going to have to go to the girls' room. Tracy quickly spoke up and said, oh, do you mind if I join you? Because that beer goes right through me. And Danielle Elizabeth said, oh, me too, because like you, cold beer goes through me, especially when I have it with pizza. And so the three ladies stood up, got their balance, and they slowly made their way down the hall following Aunt Brandy. She had been to the girls' room before. They watched them walk down the hallway and she said, you know, those three could be related <laughs> the way they can't handle a pitcher of beer. Esther said, you know, I agree. I don't understand why, but none of them seem to be able to handle beer. And so they all chuckled and went back to conversation. By then, the restaurant was pretty empty. Um, the girls were just going to wait for Aunt Brandy and the twins to come back and they would probably leave for the night. Uh, at that point, three men came into the restaurant. They were wearing hoodies. And Esther could tell they were up to no good. The first one pulled out a gun, pointed it at the cashier, and said, fill this bag with all of your money or I'll start shooting. And Esther quickly st stood up, told Day, keep everybody here and nobody should move. Esther grabbed an empty uh, pitcher of beer and put it on a plate that was on an empty table next to to them and she was walking up to the front and yelled out to the cash the cashier whose name was Betty she said she said Betty this group only has a hundred dollars can I get cash for that can you break it at that point one of the men thinking that Esther had a lot of cash on her, uh, approached her and Esther went into action, quickly grabbed him and hit him hard on the third and fourth ribs, broke him and he dropped to the ground. She went a few steps more, hitting the second person in the ribs, sending him to the ground. The third person who was the tallest and at the front register, he had his gun pointing at Betty and he turned it to Esther, but by then it was too late. Esther was already disarming him. She hit him hard in the ribs, breaking two of his ribs. He fell to the ground. Esther had taken his gun, put it away. The other two didn't have guns. And Esther could see Betty was extremely nervous at that point. So Esther went over to Betty and said, nothing happened tonight, everything's fine. And she walked Betty over to a chair and said, please sit down and put this in your mouth. And she put a butterscotch rum lifesaver in her mouth and said, now suck on this, Betty. This will be really good for you. And then Esther walked back to the three men on the ground. She grabbed two seats from uh, two chairs from a table close by and 
put them side by side. And then she picked up the one gentleman by the elbow and said, I want you sitting here. And then she sat next to him. And she's going through his billfold, checked out his ID, and then put it in his shirt pocket and said, Steve, you've really messed up here. And she says, armed robbery is a felony punishable up to 10 years in prison. She said, it looks like you and your brothers are all going to have a lot of trouble explaining this. Steve had trouble breathing, but he finally managed a few words and said, Mom was right. I'm a loser. And I failed my brothers. So Esther looked at him. Esther was good at evaluating people. And she saw good in him. As a matter of fact, she could tell his brothers were just following his lead that they were good. So Esther said, well, Steve, I want to ask you something. Do you want me to call an ambulance or the police? Now, if I call an ambulance, there's going to be three jobs waiting for you and your brothers when you get out of the hospital. My cousin's will give you jobs. He's Chinese and he owns a motorcycle shop. And Steve says, you don't know me. Why are you doing this? Esther said, prison has a way of ruining people. And she said, and I believe three brothers need a chance to turn themselves around. So Steve, what is it? Ambulance or the police? Steve said, an ambulance, please. So Esther pulled out her phone, which had been concealed on her body, and Esther is very good at concealing many things on her clothing. She hit one button, it was a speed dial to her good friend John. And she told John she needed another favor to please send an ambulance for three men who were going to turn them their lives around. And all three had broken ribs. So nobody could hear what John was saying, but Esther said, he's these three brothers need another chance to turn them their lives around. And then she hung up. Within a minute, several ambulances showed up. Two people came out from each ambulance, evaluated the brothers, and took them off. At that point, Esther walked back to the table, smiled at everybody and said, you all did good. Uh, and the twins and Aunt Brandy were walking out of the restroom and they came up and Esther smiled at everybody and said, let's not discuss this with the ladies. And so Aunt Brandy is saying, Sorry it took us so long, but there's only two stalls in there and we were waiting and discussing different things. And Esther asked her, well, are the restrooms nice and clean? And, and Brandy said, yes, very clean. Esther said, well, that's good. That helps repeat customers. So at that point, Esther said, Day's going to um, drive your car, Aunt Brandy, and 
take you and the twins home and you can drop off uh, she can drop off Riley Grace and Raven too and I'll take Chris Eve and um, the other girl <laughs> home so Esther is going to take half of them home and Brandy uh, Dave would drive half of them home Chris Eve and Helen so anyway uh, they all get up and Mr. Uh, um, Pilarese the third he comes up and he says my father is taking care of the bill for everybody and please come back anytime and he said we really appreciate your coming tonight and he said he turned to Aunt Brandy and he said please come back soon sometime perhaps when we were not so busy so that we can visit a little bit more and then he excused himself he had to go to the back so on the way out the cashier uh, Betty she was standing there at the front puzzled like she had forgotten something and she couldn't remember what it was so the girls left and they were all going to meet at Hester's house after um, after they took some of the girls home. Then the twins and Aunt Brandy would be uh, at Esther's home for the evening. Tomorrow was Monday, tomorrow would be a school day. Something exciting 